I mean, what's interesting is this. What I'm seeing from a, f- a good few Arsenal accounts at the minute is don't let anybody pressure you into like making gonna, bold predictions. And I get that. And I get that they mm-hmm. don't want that. Why do you, why? I know there's some rivals on this. Neeks, why do you think some Arsenal accounts are now pushing this notion of let's not say anything above just finishing the top four? Is that to relieve pressure from the team? Is that not to be laughed at if they collapse? But at some point, like there has to be a point in the season if they're still top. Where if they drop off massively, it's looked at as going like it looks at as a fact. Like, why do you think this is? I tell you why because they don't truly believe that they're going to win the title. That's why. So, and that's the, that's the only thing that it can be because the reason will be at the end of the season, and then it's fair enough. At the end of the season, if I'll say when you don't win the title, but you finish second or third or maybe even fourth, the the reason at that point would be well, our target was fourth anyway. So by not ever putting yourself as title contenders, as long as you meet your preseason expectations, it's a good season. But things change. So if you are top at Christmas and then you finish fourth, something went wrong and it has to be questioned, but they don't want that questioning. So I think if they really believe they were title contenders, they would say, we're title contenders. Yeah. They don't really believe it. And I'm, I don't blame them for not really believing it because like I said earlier, we know their history. They also know their history. Burnt before maybe um, last season wasn't great, and all of a sudden now they're first. They wasn't really expecting this, so it kind of is what it is. They don't really believe enough in it, but it's don't, all can I, I count? Is, I'll count to that. Go, go, yeah, go on, money. If, if uh, you, you don't truly believe it, then you mm-hmm. can't criticize us for not believing it as well. That's what I was saying. No, 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 no. I, th- I think you did right, and I think I was on a, I was on a. Um... I was on Never a Foul with uh, Daps and uh, Kaz earlier on this season, and they asked me, and and they they clipped it, they've got it, they're waiting for the pre- they're waiting to share it, but they can't because I'm spot on at the moment. And I said to them, I said if Mikalata gets the transfers he wants internally, he is telling them to win the league because that is who he is as a person. I do not see Mikalata as a person going, let's go for top four. He, he's not that guy. He's just not that guy. He, he's he's a he's a mentality monster. He wants to win everything. Oh, um, no, no, no. But that, oh, yeah, I can say that. No, but that's just, but he's our manager. I know. I know more what he is as a character, and, and I know. And we saw in it all or nothing documentary who he is as a character. Oh, he's telling them internally. Oh, I said. I said if we get our targets, um, and we missed out on one, we missed out on the midfielder. So. If we fill that in January, I, I I genuinely do not see as why why we can't finish because everyone keeps saying, "Oh, but one injury away, one injury away, one injury away." So is every other team. So one Monty. every other team's one injury. If 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 Man City lost Kevin De Bruyne and Rodri, their midfields are shambles. Literally, it's, it's actually quite a shambles, and you can exploit it. If if Chelsea lose Mount, who's currently in form right now, and Koulibaly at the back, you're you're quite you're quite leaky at the back. If, if Liverpool lose Salah, do you know what I mean? It can happen. If, if 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 Tottenham lose Kane, who scores half the goals, and it's because he is a world-class striker. It's as simple as that. He is just a great striker, and if you supply him, he'll score. But if you take that away, they dry up, and 100%. every team is that 100%. is that away. So that's what I don't like, that narrative. And we, we got our targets, and there's a feel-good factor. I noticed you this see? weekend... Go on. So, sorry, just before you go, Patrick, I've noticed this weekend, right? I don't know if any of you noticed it. The, the Arsenal fans that wanted Liverpool to win, subconsciously really actually believe they are title contenders. And the Arsenal fans that weren't really bothered about the result generally just feel they are top four contenders. I noticed that this weekend. Mm-hmm. Arsenal, like, Arsenal yes. fans celebrated the Liverpool result more than the Newcastle result. Yeah, Arsenal's Arsenal exactly. back. Arsenal's back on yeah, contract right. extension. Yeah. yeah. Well, we saw that, with, we saw that with, with, with Jesse's prediction on Friday. She was like, I want Liverpool to lose. Yeah. And everybody, and everybody said, why? She, well, I want Liverpool to lose because I want them out of the top four race because she still sees them as more of a... Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think there's some Arsenal fans, and this is where I just would like fans... To, I, I, I did a little clip from Fan Channel Review Show earlier today saying that there are a lot of people that pretend to be in the fan media sphere that we're in, but all they're ever trying to do is tell people to stay calm and, and not make any bold predictions, never be hyperbolic. Never slag off one of your own players. Never never overreact in happiness or overreact in annoyance. And I'm sitting there like, that is what being a football fan is all about. And if you're going to stop that, this industry that, that's been created out of nowhere is going to disappear and go away. And you'll become as boring and as mundane as the mainstream media. If you actually look at the mainstream media, talk sport have, have literally gone, right, we're just going to get people on our shows now that do what the, fa- the fans were doing. 
because their presenters were always fairly neutral. Now they're all fans and back a certain club. You've got like what CBS do on their Sky on their uh, Champions League nights. That's just that for me is fan culture now being on the mainstream where they're just having fun and it's it's kind of not one hundred percent professional. It is in the, the traditional sense of the word. It's brilliant. And I get this feeling there's two lots of Arsenal fans. You've got some that don't want to admit they believe because they don't want to be clipped or they don't want to be called out by certain Arsenal fans. They say, no, 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 don't step out of line. And then you've got others that are like, no, I just think that we're in the top four race. They're then kind of getting abused by the same people that think you're actually going to do it. And I just want Arsenal fans to be honest individually, not as a group, because you're not a group. You're individuals. You're all sovereign. All your own opinions is say what you think and feel. And some Arsenal fans, Colleen's one of the only ones that comes on here and says it. She's like, We are in this title race, and I respect that. She doesn't care if she's right or wrong. Her life, her job, nothing is going to change if she's wrong. Equally, nothing even changes if she's right. It's a fucking opinion. And I'm I'm so frustrated that people struggle to get to know. Someone said to me the other day, I think you should stop predictions on your channel, Terry, because they're they're, they're pointless. I'm like, no, previewing a game and giving a prediction. What's wrong with it? He goes, yeah, but what, what if you get it wrong? It can ruin someone. Who gets ruined by it? David, you've had a lot of things wrong on the terrace. Crazy. How well is your life going right now, David? Pretty well. It's Pretty right. well. Do you know what I mean? Patrick, have you been dragged into an office at work and told you've got a prediction wrong, you're going to lose your job? No, nah, never. <laughs> never, never. You know what I'm saying? Never. It doesn't they, happen. They, they, they killed, they killed me for the party shout, though. Wrong. They killed me for that in the office. <laughs> When I get a prediction run, I'll let you know how it goes. But I've, I'm, I'm, uh, 100% at the moment. I'll be, I'll be, don't worry, I'll be here in May. I'll be here in May. <laughs> I think a discussion we should have, though, instead of a title race, is the uh, top four, you know, because I think, well, I, think new, I think Newcastle, I you know, are more, I do, more well, of a threat. I, want, I don't want to go off the title for, race. Just yeah, I, want, I, want to stand the, sorry, I just want to stay on the title race for a little bit longer. But it's about Arsenal. Tottenham, though, because by the same breath, okay, by the same breath, if Arsenal fans have got to start talking about the title race, Spurs are level on points with City. I don't even think Spurs have been playing their best as of yeah. yet. They could get even better. There's another level to go to. Yeah. Surely we have that same pressure must be applied to Tottenham from this point of view. No, I think Tottenham be. are just unlucky. I you've, think got a man- unlucky you, you've got a manager. You've got your manager is one of the best league managers in the world. Mm. You've got a world-class strike force. You don't really concede that many goals. Midfield-wise, you haven't even introduced Basuma properly to this team yet. Surely there must be a conversation too, because well, the, the reason I say this is this, and I'm respecting Tottenham and Arsenal here. Everybody keeps saying, well, what if they get injuries? What if this, what if that? City have had no injuries. They've had their best team from the start of the season, and they've dropped as many points as Tottenham, and they've dropped more points than Arsenal. So this notion, like, I'm not saying City won't run away with it. Like, yes, we know they can go on a 10, 15 game on beat and run, but so far, I don't think they have been X, like that much better than those two teams. Not they've mm-hmm. definitely not been better than Arsenal over the course of these opening ten games. So yeah. why is it not conceivable that Tottenham and Arsenal can keep up with them for a period of time? They've done it for over a quarter of the season. Mm. I, th- I think there's I think... sort of two things is into it really. I think for on a Spurs perspective, I think it's just unlucky. I think it's unlucky. Like obviously they've had their best ever start to a to a season, and and like all credit to them that they have played well. They've scraped some wins. Um, as well, and they've got those ones that they, sh- they shouldn't have, but they've done it, and that's what, that's what contenders do. They, they they get those points, and I think although they've had this best run, Arsenal just have also had the best start ever, um, and, and not just in in top flight for since 1903 was the last time we had a we had a season like this, and I wasn't in top flight, but nonetheless, it gives you an idea. It's just sort of unlucky it's coming at the same time. So I think Spurs are sort of being pushed under the rug because. You have to look at some of the heritage and history. And I get that. I do get that. But that's that's the whole point, Monty. So I'll interject. But that's my point. It's the best Mm -hmm. start Spurs have had in in a generation. The greatest start in Arsenal's history. Now, Arsenal are a big club that win major trophies. The expectation is to challenge. I'm not saying put ridiculous pressure on your players to go and win it now. But you should expect to at least stay within touching distance. Spurs fans, and I know you don't like me saying this, but you want to be seen as a giant club. So you've had the best start you've had in your lifetimes. The yeah. you know, best start you've had, I think, I've read somewhere, the best start you've had to a league campaign since Bill Nicholson. I don't know if that's true. I just read it in a, a tweet from somebody. Why would? Why should you not put pressure on your team to go to the next level? Because I'm telling you now, Liverpool and City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Man United, all the big clubs do that. So why should your two clubs, who profess to be as big or want to be as big, not do the same thing? That is what the big clubs do. It's the pressure that you put upon your players can you handle it? That's what Tell giant me. clubs do, right? Just to add to what you said earlier earlier as well, for me, 
Tottenham still have that level to go and you're still where you're at. So imagine when you hit that level, who, who's to say you can't? I don't understand a Tottenham fans kind of playing it down. Best thing is, it's we'll Arsenal as well, though. We, we can get better. Yeah, we can actually yeah, we're playing it yeah. down. We're doing we're doing what Arsenal are doing right now because Arsenal are top of the league and realistically they should be all screaming at the title contenders. They're playing good football. They've won the most amount of games. They've only dropped three points out of thirty. That's actually crazy. So mm. realistically, all Arsenal fans should be saying they're contenders, but they've been scarred. They got PTSD. They've seen them, you know, fall away before. It's the same with us. Like, no, I'm not even bannering. I'm being serious. So because yeah, these fair. two teams haven't done it recently. Of course, we're going to be a bit reluctant to come out and say it, but yeah, Tottenham. For when me, I've always City said it. Win also, like also five yeah. the last six also or Spurs seven. That's it. Window. Don't forget that Spurs won the transfer window. Don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got your. No, no, I, mean, I, I thought, you, what I thought you Chelsea won it. David, no, what you about got, you? No, hold, hold on. Be, be, before I get on to us, you guys you remember. Remember, this whole summit was get your business done early. You guys got in like six transfers. You got in Fraser Force. You won the transfer window. I don't want to yeah, hear. Yeah, then Todd B that's came what, in and just started dunking money. Oh, so, but but so people said lot. Sterling was bad. Who people came in? I don't even remember. Who came um, in? But hold. On. Who came in? Todd B. Todd B. So it's one of the players. Player. You also, you also, you're the same person who said that Kula Bali's ass. So yeah, no, and he you is. Can't, he you can't, is. You can't. He's I still saw, saw links that Todd wants yeah, yeah. to uh, offer Saka a contract to bring into West. It made me laugh so well, much. No, it, what, what, what he actually, if he actually, the, the, the Ben Jacobs dealt with that. He goes, they're monitoring him, but like most clubs are monitoring it in case something went wrong. Like it's very normal. 